What's up my fellow collectors? This is Isoka. Thank you all for coming back to another video. This is sort of a weekly update recap video kind of going over some sales that happened and some purchases that I did during the last week. Some of them arrived, some of them haven't, so we'll just go over the stuff that's kind of here for now. Apart from that, you know, kind of the reopening is happening in California. Kind of seeing a trend where sales are slowing down, but also the bigger cards that I had had already sold and I kind of waited already for the sort of sort of better offers that came by you know I talked about previously uh, getting some offers on Instagram somebody wanted to do a bulk deal kind of like a thousand dollars down like a, almost a quarter like 25 percent off of what the sort of market value was on eBay but private with a bulk group discount wanting to go further and further and I talked about strategizing with offers and this week I one good offer I only sold three cards technically this week here we are here and two of them these two right here i sold for 180 each these psa 8 uh, zapdos and moltres from fire red leaf green i uh, probably paid about 30 dollars or more 30 40 dollars a piece plus grading fees and then ebay fees you're looking at like 110 120 profit for these two and you know i would have liked to have held out for more but with the way things are kind of going right now, it seems like things are slowing down just a little bit. And the even the fire or that, that craze that was kind of happening within the EX series seems to be limiting down to certain cards right now. And even then, those aren't really flying off the shelves. So I figured I'd sell these because I was close to having enough money for a deal that I've been trying to pay for this month. And I keep failing, um, keep buying other crap or... I probably should stop buying other things, which is a whole other topic in and of itself. You're always seeing a deal or a collection come up and you just you just end up buying it and you think back later on, oh, that's not that much, or I got this coming in, and next thing you know, you look back, you're like, wait, I spent a thousand dollars on what? And you look over and you know, it's I'm like, here's a stack of cards right here, and I'm like, well, there goes four hundred dollars. What the hell happened there? Uh so yes, <laughs> sometimes I have a I have difficulty trying not to buy things that I think are, are good deals. So it's hard to pass that up. Uh, here was a good deal though, that or good offer at least. This was a Groudon that I sold uh, for $330 on eBay. So after fees, around $290. And I paid about $40 for this card. Grading fees in total, probably $45 or $48 to $50. So $240 profit. This was a, I believe this card came from Fourth Star TCG who found a uh, EX person or just a person listing a bunch of cards from basically Wizards of the Coast all the way to the SL Shinies from uh, Call of Legends and after he had his pick he sent me the list He's like hey by the way this guy's got some stuff I already went through cards look pretty good so I picked up this and some other cards for around 25 to 50 dollars a piece and most of them have graded PSA 9 a few 8s 8.5s but yeah this I had it for 350 somebody gave me a 330 offer and you know what I was like what the hell let's go for it sold it so those are my sales for the week currently though there is uh, cards about 40 something cards on PWCC's April block I have a few cards ending in the first one and then most of the cards ending in the second half which I think is something different now than what they used to have where it was all you know crammed into one block basically and with all those German cards it's been occupying just a ton of space and they kind of split it up into two days. So luckily, I've only sent off Jungle, Gym Heroes, Gym Challenge, and Neo Genesis cards. So those are kind of what's there. The highlight of my submission this month for uh, PWCC is a PSA 10 uh, for Alligator. Not the not the $10,000 one, but like the three to 4000 So we'll see how that one does. Uh, Steelix from Neo Genesis got a PSA 10 as well. Uh, Teflosion 18 got two nines. Meganium 10 or 11 got nine. So I got a lot of nines. Uh, from Neo Genesis and most of those cards I think were $25 a piece so and then $20 per card for economy grading which was not very fast at all it was, it was barely faster than my quarterly special at the time so yeah it's um overall can't really complain I probably spent about $50 for some of those cards and most of them are going to sell for $250 all the way up to probably six seven hundred for some of the nines so a great great profit on that one and, you know, I think I took advance out just recently. So whatever I get from PWCC is going to be not quite what you'll see when I show it to you, kind of talking about the sales of it, kind of the purchase, the deal that happened and kind of my thought process on why I went through that method and kind of why it didn't quite work out the way I wanted. 
and I probably could have just auctioned it myself at the time. So yeah, let's get into purchases now because that's it for my sales. Here are, uh, these are two cards from Marvel. I collect these as well and I used to have a pretty decent sized collection like this before, uh, before I sold everything the first time. The first time before I sold it, uh, yeah, the first time, and so these are precious metal gems from Marvel Fleer, which also I believe that's the same company who did it for sports, which is really well known for Sky Box or Sky Sky Metal Basketball, like Fleer something from 1997 is the really the most known set from this, where you had cards like Kobe and Michael Jordan that were colored in red and green and were numbered, but a lot of those cards are heavily damaged. You'll see on some of them from, say, Nat uh, Nat Turner, the guy who is now the CEO or the lead on the investment group that purchased PSA. I've seen quite a few that he has, and most of those go for fifty to say two or three hundred thousand for some of those cards. And they're not even the lower pop um, cards. Like these are the there's the base ones for this, which is no numbered. Then the lowest one is red, which is like one to a hundred or one to two hundred. Then these are usually about 1 to 50, so 1 to 49 and 1 to 50. Then they have a green one, which is 1 to 10. And then this last year, I think they came out with a gold one, which is 1 of 1. So I haven't seen too many of those sell. And yeah, I imagine if you get one of those with a Hulk or Wolverine, you're probably not going to get those to sell. But these were things that I was looking out for. I paid about 200 and 300 for each of these. So 220, like 320 for this. I uh, know 200 for this one and 300 for this one. And so with these, I was looking at them on eBay and trying to buy these. I saw Comics Trust listing them up for like two or 3,000 a piece. And then I saw them on auction. They were ending for like five, six, seven hundred dollars $700. Then they were immediately relisted within an hour. The bidders had kind of had the telltale signs of shield bidding which is, you know, where you think somebody, whether the person themselves or somebody else is bidding to help boost up the price. And quite a few of these cards had sold multiple times. I even recall a 40 out of 50 on one of these cards and a 25 had sold multiple times, like three or four or five times by the time it finally sold. And there was a, so this is a, kind of jumping all over. This is 2015. This is 2017 right there. 2015. I was looking at 2013, which I think ended at about $700, but I was working and I forgot to put on my uh, timer for it. So these are the ones that I ended up with. Luckily, there's 50 of them. So I imagine I'll have an opportunity to pick up one of the 2013s at some point. And I think I'll get these graded as well. So one more non-Pokemon TCG before we get into it. So this was a case of, uh, this is Yu Yu Hakusho. I'm a big fan of Yu Yu Show. kind of got into it early on. I was into Dragon Ball, but this was just something that stuck with me a lot more. I liked the characters, the designs, the stories. Um, always a little more complex than kind of the Dragon Ball stories. And I saw these on auction for like 99 cents. And I just put a bid on each one of them and I completely forgot about it. And they had a $1.50 shipping. And so I just put that on each one of them. Hmm. Elder Tagoro, Karasu, got a lot of the characters. Kuwabara, Bui, uh, oh, Yusuke, nice. I see, I don't even know what I even want here. Kurama, uh, Team Ichigachi, oh, that's a nice one. I think this is later, and that's a first edition. This is how they have their first edition here. It's kind of like this eyeball, kind of like Sauron from Lord of the Rings. So that's a first edition stamp. I don't know if these are all first edition. I think this is a, a promo, I believe. I don't see. Yeah, I don't I don't see anything else on there. Botan, very nice. Oh, trying to show these. Chu, I think this is a. Uh, oh man, I'm really bad at this. I think this is a promo because there's no, there's no number over here. This is as you can tell, this has a numbered portion on it, and S I believe is starter. Koenma and Karama. So yeah, man, these are. I really like these. I'm gonna put these in a binder. I would like to grade, but I think obviously I'm just gonna. I think grading at this point on everything is kind of, um, you don't have to do it. And with scorecards for Dragon Ball and with Yu Hakusho and other um, anime cards, the quality is really bad. So it's it's almost not worth grading unless the card is, say, $500 plus. And there's there's very few cards from Yu Yu Hakusho that are that price. You know, some of the cards very late, late on. I don't know if there's 
print issues or they weren't printed because uh, there were some set cards that go for like 500 and excuse me and I don't know if those were cards like uh, reverse hollow TV reporter from EX Dragon that wasn't so two two stories that I heard one that it wasn't printed and the only printing that they had was late and in the Europe and European countries and then the other one was that it only made it into one of every five or six boxes so I've heard both of those stories regardless of which one is true the card wasn't easy to find in there so it was very difficult to find for that and TV reporter is like a seven eight hundred dollar card for just a reverse hollow so I don't know if that case with Yu Yu show if those cards weren't printed they just missed it they didn't have the foiling on it or if it was very played could be a combination of that but there are a few cards that are 500 to probably 1500 2000 dollars that the highest being the dark one there's a non-holo and then a holo version uh crazy story with that is the dark one was supposed to be printed and put into the dark tournament set i believe is like a uh, sort of like a secret rare card or some other set and I guess somebody had, an employee had stolen it. I think eventually the employee went to Australia. So unless you got it from an employee or given out as a, as a prize card, the only other person that had it was somebody that stole it from the factory. Now that's the story I've been told from one of the guys with the larger positions in it. Um, so I could be wrong on that. could be somebody trying to inflate the price of it as well. But it's, it's a very sought after card in uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. It's the holy grail of Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, but yeah, the seller included some extras here, so eventually I'll probably try to make a binder set of some of these. I just enjoy it. Kind of gives you something to do and not spend money. Uh, so spending money to not spend money, I guess, is one way to look at it. Um, last purchase here that I made was from Instagram. Uh, some friends gave me a link to somebody that was, hopefully the video is not too dark. Um, but yeah. This is EX Deoxys. A lot of these cards are near mint or better, near mint mint. And these are EX Deoxys Reverse Hollows. And these are in great condition. I paid $430 for 60 Reverse Hollows. Go ahead and show some of these, the rare cards. Because I already have quite a few from some of the EX collections that I purchased. So I've been actually trying to... Uh, complete a complete set. So this one's one of the bigger cards. Deoxys here. I believe that is Speed Form. Ludicolo. Nicargo. Sabli. Which apparently this is the only reverse hollow that has the hollow pattern going over the character. It's the only card that apparently is a hollow bleed um, intentionally. And the rest of this, as you can see right here, there's nothing on... Oh, that is an awesome hollow pattern. There's nothing on this Deoxys, nor the Macargo. So that one was a card that was intentional for the hollow blade. Is that too there? So yeah, I paid about, in on average, I think it was somewhere around 6 $7 a card. Some of these are worth a little more. Some of these are worth a little less. But at this point, I think I'm close to a complete set. And Deoxys, ooh, there we go. So this one is the... Uh, non-hollow version that is hollow in the star charge theme deck so just a lot of great cards that i picked up and then last but not least these are some that have been sitting there but i just haven't shown just a lot of unseen forces i've been picking up just a lot of unseen forces cards the theme deck version uh, more deoxys yeah i've been hesitant to show a lot of these cards just because I don't want to make any movements, partially for my own benefit, if I'm being honest. I don't want to show a lot of these cards. But the other part of it is, I don't want to influence anything as well. You know, I try to give advice or talk about things or, you know, say the TV reporter or other cards like that. I like to give out information, but I don't want to unknowingly or kind of affect any market. I've seen a lot of other people talk about, you know, uh, Cardinal Gaming, talking about talking about cards and then mentioning later on how after having a video talking about whatever he does next thing you know there's a bunch of sales from his online store regardless of even if he's telling them not to buy something people go ahead and buy stuff and i'm doing my best to try to make sure that i don't show a lot of cards and talk about a lot of things and and hype them up i just want to talk about whatever's happening just i love the ex series it's one of my favorite sets of all time just that or era and series of all time and has my favorite set 
has some of the best selection of Pokemon in it, best designs, the patterns, just set designs as well, including the cards. So I try not to show a lot of these. There's a lot more EX stuff that I have that I just haven't even shown that I plan to show in later videos. And I've been kind of taking my time with it because I don't want to... I just don't want to kind of affect the market or, or kind of talk about, hey, this is this is going to go up to the moon because at the end of the day, this, this stuff could crash and... You know, obviously I feel I got a good deal on this, but it, it could go down and I don't want to, I don't want to be responsible for getting, giving anybody any financial advice when a lot of these channels will do it just to gain an audience and a following. So, um, I try to show as much as I can, but sometimes I try not to show too much just so I'm not affecting anything. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea about what's going on for the week, kind of thought process and stuff that's going on, but as always, I appreciate all of you that, you know, watch the video, message me on Instagram or leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. So thank you all. And until the next time, peace out.